How's it going, guys? It is 2.37 a.m. Friday, July 8th here in Japan, and we have an easy question for genetics slash pathology for step one, okay? Not going to be a lengthy clip here. Cut to the chase, not waste our fucking time. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. So 44-year-old man, he has a two-month history of fatigue and soreness of his hands. Physical examination shows darkening of the skin of the forearms, fasting glucose, 120 milligrams per deciliter, BMI is 20, serum bicarbonate, 24, serum potassium, 4.2. Question wants to know the most likely explanation for these findings. So serum potassium is normal, okay? Should be 3.5 to 5. Bicarbonate is normal, should be 22 to 28. So we th we think about this uh, because this could have relevance for Addison disease, which is the wrong fucking answer here. But... Uh, by all means, darkening of the skin of the forearms, it's an important differential. We also want to think about Cushing's, uh, hemochromatosis, pellagra, niacin deficiency. Okay, so various etiologies. So BMI is 20 in the setting of in, uh, impaired fasting glucose. Okay, that's interesting. So fasting glucose should be 72 to 99 milligrams per deciliter, 100 to 125 impaired fasting glucose. Two measurements, 126 milligrams per deciliter or greater is diabetes mellitus. Any one random fasting glucose, 200 or greater is diabetes mellitus, as well as an HbA1c 6.5% or greater. So this guy has impaired fasting glucose in the setting of a low normal BMI, darkening the skin of the forearms, normal electrolytes. So this is bronze diabetes. This is hemochromatosis, okay? As I said, this isn't difficult. This is an easy question. You need to know that hemosiderin deposition in the skin from iron, okay? And that you can also have deposition in the tail of the pancreas, cause diabetes. And we can have a myriad of other findings, okay? Cardiomyopathy, restrictive, dilated. We can get infertility. We can get pseudo-gout. OMG, holy shit, okay? This is pseudo-gout. So calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease, two biggest risk factors, primary hyperparathyroidism, as well as hereditary hemochromatosis. So I'm just going to whip through the answer choices here. Uh, you need to know the inheritance pattern, okay? What's it going to be? Holy shit. It's going to be autosomal recessive. Okay, it's my observation. A lot of students think it's AD. It's not. Hemochromatosis is AR. So we know we're dealing with homozygous mutation here. And the mechanism is increased intestinal absorption of iron. Okay, that's the mechanism for hemochromatosis. Mm -hmm. Wrong fucking answer would be homozygous decreased secretion of cations in a bile, which would be Wilson disease. Okay, so we have copper overload. Can't secrete copper into bile. Okay, and if we had no specific mutation, with decreased reabsorption of, actually, I'm being a fucking asshole right now. That, that's wrong. If we had homozygous, decreased reabsorption of dibasic amino acids in the proximal convoluted tubule, that's autosomal recessive for cystinuria, okay? So uh, cysteine, ornithine, lysine, arginine, okay? So the latter three, ola, those are dibasic amino acids. Apparently cysteine's not, doesn't fucking matter. It's the wrong fucking answer, okay? So you need to know, hemochromatosis, bronze diabetes, exceedingly high yield and it's autosomal recessive the heavy metals wilson and hemochromatosis autosomal recessive you know the deal i'm going to continue to make more content if you like my stuff subscribe to my channel and i appreciate your time that's it